Royal positions on the increasingly worsening environmental conditions affecting not only the UK but the rest of the world. And do you support the students striking from school in order to raise awareness? So I really see a, an incredible um, world right now where more people are being displaced from climate than they are from, be, from war. And so that, and most people are moving into cities, and then the cities are being haggard by all these environmental crises. So I'm really excited and, and support what's happening with the school strikes. But I'd also like to highlight the importance and, of things like how Greta Thornburg was working with Jane Goodall, this sort of intergenerational knowledge. Some of your professors, your teachers, your headmasters, they have busted their, themselves to get there for you, and that knowledge is super important. So I, I really want to say how important it is to have that youth strike, but also reach up and, and over to your, your, your parents, your grandparents, and those incredible stowalts of your communities, because that's where the knowledge lies in passing it. Yeah, I mean, I think that the science evidence about what's happening and why is overwhelming. And clearly, uh, we do face a fundamental global crisis unless, above all, we can bring down our emissions of carbon dioxide. When I then look at the practical politics of applying the science, a lot of people would say that nuclear power is one way we can produce energy without producing carbon dioxide. Nuclear power is very kind. I see a guy in the second row shaking his head. As soon as you start trying to do something specific like that, you find there are people who say, no, we don't want nuclear power, and other people who say, it's very hard to see how you can really have a electricity that doesn't produce any carbon dioxide without nuclear power being part of the mix. When we look at the crops we need to produce and the chemicals we need to produce them, there are a lot of scientists who say genetically modifying the crops is a good way of producing more food whilst using less pesticide. There are other people who say GM crops are evil, they threaten the environment, we can't have GM crops. So as soon as you move from the overall objective, which is absolutely right, of tackling the climate crisis by producing less carbon dioxide, and look at individual specific decisions that people have to take. Do we build that nuclear power station or not? Do we have GM crops or not? At that point, commanding consent to any specific course of action is hard work. But every time we have a meeting like this, I hope, we hope we make some progress because all those kind of decisions added up are how we are going to tackle the genuine crisis that we all face. The school strikes are amazing. It's all the youth saying we need to do something about climate change. But the government doesn't seem to be doing very much. There's people, we're going vegan, we're not using our cars, we're using public transport, but we've still got all these power stations and gas companies and they're still doing all this stuff. And I think the problem is we have all these, little, we have all these conversations about how we need to do something, but nothing seems to be actually done. 80% of the wind that hits Europe hits the UK first and we could have been a net energy exporter until the Tory administration stopped onshore wind from happening. We could have had, uh, uh, in 12 years, so in two years away, we would have had solar cover everything, but they pulled the feed-in tariff from solar. So really, what we have is pre- and post-tax subsidies for, for nuclear, for oil and gas, and if there was a level playing field, we would have that. And let's, th th there's nothing other than that, and I've argued this on LBC and everything, and it's, there's all the, the facts are there. Nuclear is not even a discussion to be had because there's so much, there's so many ramifications negative to the environment that we can do it without, with battery storage, solar, and wind. Environmental crisis is, has reached its peak in terms of how much it's impacting on not just humans, but also the creation of God. And I think to a degree, it's not just the, the politicians, but also faith leaders and others have actually neglected this area because in our faith traditions, I, I, if I speak from my own faith tradition, Islam, you know, how much emphasis is placed on being, a, being someone who's trusted with the creation of God.